The number of active cases of COVID-19 in Thunder Bay declined again this week. As of yesterday, there were just 24 cases of the virus in the district. Meanwhile, the eligibility criteria for vaccines has expanded again. Now anyone born in or before 2003 can get their shot. But the district health unit also reported one more death, bringing to 63 the total number of people who have died from the virus. As well, the variants of concern continue to be identified here. Dr. Janet DeMille is the Medical Officer of Health for the Thunder Bay District Health Unit. She joins us this morning for her weekly update on our COVID situation. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. How are you? I'm all right. And you? I'm good. Yep. All right. Now, since we talked last Thursday, we've only had about 13 positive cases reported and the active count down to uh, 24 as of yesterday, like I mentioned. How are you feeling about this trend? Oh, it's just very relieving to see this. And, uh, you know, of course, we've done well, certainly in the last number of weeks, even the last month, right? And, um um, you know, I always always a little nervous, but um, the fact that we can sort of keep the numbers down and even drop uh, further, like we've done this week, is very reassuring. Now we did see another death uh, reported this week. How worrisome is that? Uh, you know what? I think this just reflects that um, you know this is a serious uh, illness and it's a serious pandemic, right? Uh, we do know that uh, you know a lot of people may not have that many symptoms, or it's a it's a milder illness or a moderate one, and they they recover. But um, that's not the case for everybody. There's uh, individuals who you know have very severe illness, whether they manage at home or they need hospitalization. And unfortunately, we know that people pass away as a result of it. So it's always very you know sad to see that. And um, you know it's probably one of my big motivators, you know, in terms of trying to control this pandemic is to prevent those the, 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 those you know serious keep our numbers low so that we have less likely to have you know higher numbers of individuals who have require hospitalization or pass away as a result of this and you know that has you know that's very devastating for that family and the experience that they have as a result of that you know of their their that person being being ill and you know that's very challenging mhm We are seeing cases involving variants of concern. Uh, How many of our recent cases have turned out to be these variants? So I would say most, or not, if not all, of their cases recently have been a variant of concern. So, and that's really not surprising. I, it, it basically that's the, it's the variants of concern that are are the ones that are largely circulating in the province and. Um, <clears throat> kind of um, the the regular variants that we had, uh, the ones that sort of aren't called the VOCs, um, really are ha- showing minimal spread. So um, so it's not really surprising, but we are we're still able to very much control it. I mean, it, it, it the same public health measures, the same follow up that we do for any type of uh, COVID nineteen, uh, we do, and and it does work. Now, how surprised are you that our case numbers have remained so low, given that we've had 80 cases involving variants of concern since February, and roughly half of those just in this past month? Uh, yeah, like I, I think it, so um, first of all, what we've seen is um, uh, that uh, the variants will spread. I mean, we've had sort of outbreaks or spread among, you know, sort of a gathering, uh, so it does spread, and it's likely spreading easier than, than what we would have seen, mm-hmm. you know, a year ago. Uh, but at the same time, we're not seeing, uh, you know, a lot of sort of in- new introductions into this area. And if, if, you know, if a workplace is practicing all of those public health measures, and many of them are and doing very well with that, um, then that can actually, the, all of those measures reduce the spread. So it's kind of uh, the balance. But certainly, I, I, and I think what you're getting at is um, we're not really out of the woods in terms of potentially having a large outbreak due to a variant of concern mm-hmm. because of the infectiousness of the, those variants. It's just that we're, we're kind of holding steady right now. But that remains, a, you know, a significant sort of concern of mine. Uh, in especially in vulnerable areas, uh, that we could still have um, an outbreak or a large cluster of cases because it's a variant and it will spread. And then, you know, if it's in a workplace, for example, you could see spread, you know, to the workers' families and, uh, you know, wherever those, 
family members might go if they have essential work or if it's a child going to daycare, you could see further spread in those settings. So I think we need to continue to hold the line and, uh, you know, so that uh, keep practicing those public health measures. And if, if you're sick, you know, if you have any symptoms, stay home, get tested, all of those usual mm-hmm. rules that we promote just to, to be able to, to hold the, the variants um, of concern, you know, back and contain them in our area. Now, we have talked about, you know, one of the key concerns was getting ahead of the variants of concern by vaccinating as many people as possible and maintaining uh, all those safety measures you mentioned. How confident are you that we're, I guess, winning the race between variants and vaccines in, in this district? Well, I think we've got a, a, a very nice lead <laughs> Um, you know, recognizing that the variants are very, these uh, COVID-19 is very tricky and it can appear anywhere and it can spread quickly. And so there is a little bit of a, vulner, you know, certainly vulnerability there, but it's really nice to see the numbers that we have and people are getting vaccinated, you know, those first dose, everybody, you know, more, you know, the, the population that has their first dose, we're still seeing good uptake, you know, when the eligibility expands, um, you know, appointment spots are filling out. And certainly in our community, we have capacity, and this is the Thunder Bay District, we have capacity to deliver a lot of vaccines. I mean, what we did last week, 9,000 uh, vaccines delivered by partners all through the region and, and people coming forward to getting those vaccines. That's what's going to help us really win this race. Now, we regularly report on the active case count, but only report on the number of vaccinations on a weekly basis. What's your sense of us reaching that magical, you know, 75 percent for first doses for the health unit? Well, we're we're on track. Um, we did some analysis in terms of the. I mean, it was at, at that you know when we opened up to 18 plus, we were trying to figure out okay how much, you know what's the you know how many people are then becoming eligible so we can make sure we're planning appropriate appointments. And we were predicting sort of in early June, I think the end of the first week of June, we would reach that sort of 75. Um, you know, could reach if, if all the appointments were filled. And uh, and that's not taking into, in, in, uh, into account, actually, all the other expansions that are in, in the different channels that are that are happening. We were just looking at appointments in mass immunization clinics. So we're really right on track. I think what I'm, uh, you know, a little bit, you know, wondering about is um, certainly there's a lot of people that are really keen to get the vaccine and uh, really pleased to see that. And, and certainly they've, you know, our, our spots are getting filled up, which is really great. Um, and at, at the same time, we know that some people may feel hesitant, may feel, you know, have, uh, you know, some concerns about getting vaccinated and maybe they're reluctant to re- sign up right away. And I, I don't know where that's going to fall in our area. And we're certainly going to be watching for that and then looking at, um, you know, as we uh, as we move forward uh, to just reach out to those people and understand what what might be influencing their choice or not to get vaccinated and, um, you know, trying to make sure that that they're well informed and that they have easy access to vaccine. And how many first doses have been administered? Uh, so when I look, uh, um, uh, so I have it. Uh, so we last week up until last Saturday, it was around 85,000 total doses. Mm-hmm. And it looks like about 10,000 of those would have been um, second doses because we know about 10,000 people are fully immunized. So they've had two doses. So I guess it was around 75,000 at the by last Saturday. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, um, the eligibility criteria says anyone born in 2003 can sign up, but if you're not 18 on the day of your vaccine, you might get turned away. Can you clarify that? Uh, yeah, so, so um, the reason uh, is, so we have two, two vaccines that we're primarily using, that's Pfizer and Moderna. And uh, Pfizer is the only one that has been approved for use in somebody under the age of 18. So that's a bit of a challenge. Then the way we distribute it, it's typically a clinic is either Pfizer or Moderna. And we, we are you know going through our supplies of both of those vaccines. So if somebody does register and it's for a clinic where we only have Moderna there, um, then you know um, it's not authorized to use in somebody who hasn't actually turned 18. So we're, we're navigating through that. Um, 
uh, it is a bit of a tricky sort of barrier that we're having to, to face and, and looking at having the Pfizer more available. But uh, the, because of the logistics around both the vaccine, particularly the Pfizer, and um, uh, that, that can be a, a challenge. Now, there's been some suggestion that testing for COVID-19 in, on, in Ontario in general is slowing down. Um, what's the testing situation here in our district? Uh, so we we've always done you know fairly well in terms of testing, and we we do monitor that. And any time, uh, you know, when there's a surge of cases or um, you know outbreaks, we always see the testing numbers go up just just because of the sort of public health follow up and and some of the messaging and people more people getting tested. And certainly our numbers have dropped. I mean, when you compare it to where we were back in March, when we had a high number of cases, where where it's very significantly lower than that. Um, but uh, we do still still have a lot of testing getting done, and I think we're we're kind of where we were. Like it, it, it slowed down considerably last summer as well, and I think it's also related to you know less people actually having symptoms, right? Um, because uh, some of those cold-like illnesses, those other viruses and other things, uh, you know, kind of drop. Um, but I think we're we're doing okay. I would just remind everybody. Uh, to make sure if you have any symptoms that the, you know, we really, really encourage you to get, uh, to get tested and to, you know, to isolate until you get those test results back. Um, that is a big part of the strategy to containing the virus here. Listen, thanks so much, as always, for uh, clearing things up for us. Thank you very much, Mary Jane. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Dr. Janet DeMille, the Medical Officer of Health for the Thunder Bay District Health Unit. A District Health Unit.